the revelation of our great apostle, Apostle Michael Rupo, who God has sent to share all trusts, revelation, misery for this coming generation. Now, this message is about contacting the fire of God and how to contact the fire of God and how to preserve the fire of God when you have it. And the fact is, you need to know. This morning, I want to talk to us about contacting the fire of God. Contacting the fire of God. Contacting the fire of God. But before I touch that, I want to show you why fire is necessary. So you will know what to do with it. And you will know what it means to you and how to treasure it and to keep it. Because if you don't know it, you may just be excited because you are a youth. And you won't even know what it stands for, how to guard it or to deploy it. And so before I talk about contacting the fire of God, let me quickly show you five things that makes fire important and five things that makes it necessary for you to guard your fire with your life. Because what will give you relevance in the move of God is the kind of fire you have and the intensity of that fire. It's one thing to have fire. It's another thing to have ever increasing fire. You can have fire but the intensity will be low. And you may not have fire but you are shouting. They are different things. Men may not discern it but spirits know. The danger of faking spiritual realities is the fact that you become a victim in the spirit realm. It is a risk to fake a spiritual reality because we have been invited to participate in the game of spirits. Spirits are the true actors. We are just vessels that convey their will and purpose. And so it's important for you to make contact with something that is genuine because when you show up, the spirits will want to know who you represent, which company you belong to. And the challenge with a fake man is that he doesn't belong to any quadrant. So God does not know him and demons don't know him. Such people become casualties of the intersection of the spirit realm. And so it's important to have the right fire that comes from the realm of God. And it's also important for you to have that fire in ever increasing, I can take, and take my seat, in ever increasing intensity. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you following? And so five reasons why every believer must carry the fire of God is number one. Fire is the acute judgment for princes in darkness. And so a man without fire cannot bring witness when princes are involved. The lowest kind of battle you will fight in the spirit realm is battle against demons. The reason is because predicated upon your revelation of the finished works of Christ, you can cast out demons. I can tell you boldly now that if you have the right revelation, even if your life is not so correct, you can cast out demons. Because there are many persons casting out demons because of the faith they have in the finished works of Christ. They can lie. And when they are confronted with the demon, they quickly repent. And they cast out those demons. But you see, when you begin to engage men and spirits it becomes more complex when you are dealing with men you need to have some measure of authority from the realm of god and then when you are dealing with princes you don't just need to have authority from god you need to be accurate because when the princes come they check you he said the prince of this world come to me and find that nothing he is not interested in your doctrine first He's interested first of all in your character, what you represent in the spirit. And when they come, they throw fiery darts. You don't cast them out, you wrestle with them. And so the only thing that will authorize you to bring witness to their realm is the flame that you carry. And this is so because the judgment upon the princes is the judgment of fire. If you study Ezekiel chapter 28 from verse 13, when God began to speak about one of the princes that walked in the first Eden, 
hope you know that man was not the first creature that walked in Eden. There was a prince that walked in Eden before man. The reason man was kept in Eden is because priesthood activity needs to begin from the presence of God. And so Eden is the abode of God. Eden is a concentration of the presence of God. So God put the man there to learn priesthood. But man was not the first priest in the courts of God. If you study that scripture down to verse 16 and 17, he was speaking to that prince and he said, you were first of all in Eden, the mountain of God. And if you know anything about mountain in the spirit, it's a place of legislation and litigation. This is why priesthood is carried out in the presence of God. If you are not in the mountain of God, you can't bring priesthood. It is only in the context of the mountain of God that God is called a judge. He said, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. In that context, he recognized God as a judge. Because in the mountains of God, legislation and litigation take place. And legislation is the act of enacting laws. Litigation is the act of enforcing laws. That is what priesthood is about. And so, priesthood is carried out in Eden. This is why man was kept in Eden. But man was not the first person in Eden. There was a prince that was more ancient than man that was in Eden. But that prince fell. And when that prince fell, the judgment that God gave to that prince is that, he said, I will cause fire to come out from within you and consume you to ashes. And so every time a man of fire shows up, he reminds the princes of the messianic judgment. This is why if you don't carry fire, you may deal with demons, but you cannot deal with principalities. Meanwhile, principalities are territorial gatekeepers. And what you want to do will need to affect territories. You can cast out a demon in your service here, but you can't take DSU. You will need power over the prince of this land to be able to bring dominion here. This is why in every service people fall down, but the territory is in darkness. The reason is because you need revelation and faith to cast out demons, but you need fire to take a territory. Because when a fireman comes here, the gatekeeper will give way. <laughs> Oh God. When you see people affecting nations, you think it's about revelation. Go study the Bible. By the time you come with all the revelation, you will know that it takes a kind of authority for your voice to pierce through a nation. For a nation to hear you, it means a prince has given way. Because princes are there to shut the voice of men. And it will take a kind of fire that the princes that shut the voices of men can resist to be able to allow your voice to affect a generation. Because they are called gatekeepers. This is why you need fire. Because you can't bring witness where there are princes. Have you not seen that you are called a prophet? You preach good messages and have invitation, but your family is in darkness. Because the prince that is sitting over your family wants to see the witness that you bring to the realms of the spirit. And if there is no witness, he will allow you to do your ministry and become popular. But he will keep the gate of that family. The only way you can judge princes is to show with the testimony of fire. This is why he said, he naked his angels, spirits. But when he came to his ministers, they are flames of fire. <laughs> they are flames. PSU will be in darkness until carriers of fire show up. And so before you pride yourself in your doctrine, find out whether your doctrine can emit fire. Because what they see is the judgment that was put upon them. And that's why till date, the last judgment is called hellfire. Because that's how princes are judged. Princes are judged with fire. And so in order to keep them at bay, God raises vessels of fire. And so when we show up and there is a prince, we remind him of hellfire. And if he is wise, he will run away. So when your fire begins to go down, you become a priest. You can no longer bring witness where it matters. Doctrine accurate. Fire not found. And so the princes will molest you. And so a generation of fire must rise. This is why this service is put together. Thank God for the teaching, but you need fire. We don't have time. Number two, priesthood. The reason you need fire is because your priesthood is English language, except as fire comes. If you study the Bible, there are only two ways or two moments where fire falls. Fire falls when God is judging. And fire also falls when there is a sacrifice on the altar. 
And so the job of priesthood is validated when there is fire. Thank God for your prayer. Thank God for the language you used when you were praying. But if fire doesn't show up, that priesthood does not have contact with the realm of God. In fact, there is no priesthood without fire. In Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12, he said the fire on the altar must not be put out. If that fire goes out, your priesthood dies. And so when you find people talking, praying, and there is no fire there, that thing they are doing cannot affect the territory. Because that thing, heaven doesn't recognize it. The only time priesthood gains momentum in the spirit is when fire begins to emerge. If you study 1 Samuel chapter 3, the Bible said Eli was there carrying out oblations and rituals. But God was not there. He said the voice of God was cast and there were no open vision. Why was it so? He said the evil lamp had gone out. And so the moment fire goes out, priesthood dies. And so the second reason why you must have fire is so that when you carry out the activity of legislation and litigation let heaven validate it if heaven does not see fire they won't validate your priesthood you will do everything you are doing you will still be a slave and so why do you keep your fire because your priesthood requires it how many of you know that when you fell into fornication you came to pray you now discover prayer is not about language because fire had gone out and so you try to shake yourself you know that this thing is flesh you are running, you know it is flesh. You are shouting, you know it is flesh. Suddenly, your voice becomes like a gong. Empty barrel. It has no weight in the spirit because the presence will leap off. And the reason is because the testimony of fire is no more. And so the second reason why you must keep your fire is because your priesthood is legitimized by your fire. And your priesthood is the only basis by which you can walk as an insured person on the face of earth of the earth anybody without priesthood is already dead our kingdom is not a kingdom of christians make no mistakes about it is the people of antioch that named us christians god doesn't know christians we were called a kingdom of priests and kings and so if you are not a priest and a king you have no authority in this kingdom this is why many christians are suffering because they are recognized by what they call them in antioch thank god for that recognition it is socially accepted but what God sees are believers who are priests and kings. And so if you have not become a priest and you have not become a king, they may call you a Christian, but your life will not be different from the people of the world. When they go to the hospital, you will follow them. When they suffer poverty, you will follow them. When they are dying, you will follow them. But priests don't die. Kings don't die. We rule upon the face of the earth. Every time we activate priesthood, our scepter comes alive. And so when men die, that death becomes the basis for us to bring witness. When men are sick, that sickness becomes the basis for us to bring sickness, bring witness. So the reason many Christians are defeated is because they are Christians. They have not graduated to the realm of priests and kings. And if you don't have a priesthood, you are a victim on the face of the earth. Why do you need to keep your fire? Because your priesthood rests upon it. May you not be a victim. The wicked spirits in this world are many. You need to walk through life with authority. Such a way that whether they like it or not, it doesn't matter. They may hate you, you make progress. They love you, you make progress. They fight you, you make progress. Whatever they do, you make progress. Because you don't make progress through fraternity. You make progress through power. Are you following? Number three, why do you need fire? You need fire because of inheritance. Every time a move of God is about to end, and another is about to begin the window of transition will require fire as a basis of election jesus was about to depart from the earth he taught them principles he taught them doctrine they saw him do wonders and when he was about to leave he gave them an advice don't go and tell people we were with jesus you will die don't go and tell people we were his friends you will be killed don't go and tell people I knew Jesus personally. That thing means nothing. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. If you don't carry this fire, you are finished. If you think it's about snapping pictures with great people and framing it and putting on your Facebook status, you will be cut off. In fact, that picture is what will implicate you. Because Peter would not have been attacked except as the young damsel came and said, this one too was with Jesus. So 
some of the fraternities will be your implication. The devil will be quiet until he now discovers. So you too, you know this apostle. That means what he's doing, he's already telling you. So before you become like him, they will cut you off. So instead of snapping pictures and posting everywhere, contact the fire. Because Peter wouldn't have been a victim except as they recognized that he was with Christ. The moment they recognized that he was Christ, attacks came. In one night, he received three attacks. And he didn't have fire. So he had to escape through a lying tongue. <laughs> but when fire came, Peter came before the Sanhedrin. He said, judge it amongst yourselves. Whether it is better to obey men or to obey God. He said, we cannot but speak of the things that we have seen and heard. What happened to Peter? Fire came upon his head. The man that was afraid of a young damsel can now confront the whole Sanhedrin. Comprising of the Pharisees, the Sadducees and the sky. George among yourself. When they tied them up to flog them, they were not moved. They say it's an honor to be beaten to be flogged on behalf of Jesus and the Bible said they returned to their own company they didn't go there to cry they didn't go there to re-strategize they didn't go there to retreat he said as they prayed he said fire fell from heaven again and the place where they were was shaken and they came out and he said with boldness they preached Jesus and he said great grace was upon them all they knew that the inheritance you have in this kingdom is the measure of fire you carry anybody without fire will not be part of the army of god this is why every transition period necessitates that there must be a baptism of fire again what we are doing here is not a ritual what we are doing is because we know we are in a transition season it was Adeboye, papa Adeboye, that was speaking the other time to young ministers and he said we are going <laughs> the man sat down on national television and he said we are going in case you can't discern it by prophecy one of the patriarchs have told you already that they are beginning to hear the sounds from heaven wise men are beginning to be taken away and in order for you to receive the inheritance that they had that gave them the authority to represent god in their cycle you must receive the fire that they have that's why jesus told his disciples he said the teaching is not enough wait until the fire comes and in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1, it said, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it said they were together in one accord, and they were praying, and it said suddenly, they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind, and it said the place where they were was filled with the Holy Ghost, and cloven tongues as of fire appeared on their head. The moment fire came, they knew they've gotten it. They went out. Men that hid in the room for 40 days suddenly stepped out, and one day Peter spoke, 3,000 was added to the church. The next time Peter spoke, 5,000 was added to the church. The next time Peter spoke, he said a great company of the priests became part of the faith. And the next time he spoke, he said the whole city came to them. So the men hiding behind closed door had the authority to take a city. He took power and fire to reveal it to them. You will be a mediocre until fire comes. Because the potentials in your spirit they will require some level of volatility to find expression and if that fire does not come that utterance will not be released if that fire does not come that boldness will not be released if that fire does not come that anointing will be congealed you need fire for the anointing to flow oil can become congealed and even though that oil has potentials it cannot flow that's what the fire comes to do to give you your own inheritance not one of us here is supposed to be left out but the question is where is your fire he said in the latter days it will cause bright clouds to fall upon every blade of grass that means what gives every blade of grass an inheritance is the torch of the fire this is why if you don't have it you contend for it and if you have it you guard it with your life because therein is your inheritance please sit down number four why do you need fire you need fire because it is fire that prepares the sons of God. It is fire. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 2, it says, He will thoroughly purge the sons of Levi, that they may bring an acceptable worship unto the Lord. If you are not purged, your brain may be right, but your spirit will be wrong. And if your spirit is wrong, your tongue is not needed. It takes the right spirit 
for a tongue to be let loose. If the sons of Levi are not purged, everything they know counts for nothing. Many people pride themselves in the places they've gone to, the training they've received. But the question is, where is the fire? When the fire does not come, the same tongue that prophesies is the tongue that gossips. The same heart that opens to receive God is the heart that harbors people. How can evil and good coexist in one man? How can light and darkness coexist in one man? Because the fire has not come. When the fire comes, it purges. Why fire torment demons? Fire purges the sons of God. This is why we enter into fire. This is why we receive the baptism of fire. So that we will become the witness that our generation is looking for. If that fire does not come, God cannot trust you. Even the ones Jesus trained, he told them to wait and receive fire first. It is the man that is on fire that I can trust. Because that man constantly is being purified. If you cannot retain the fire of God, you cannot be trusted. It means other spirits are also having intercourse with you. Because when God has intercourse with a man, he sets that man on fire. He said, kiss me with the kisses of thy mouth. Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 2. He said, thy love is better than wine. He said, because of the savory ointment of thy good name. He said, the virgins love you. He said, my beloved has called me to his bedchamber. We will not remember the testimony of the wine. We will speak only of thy love. That is intimacy with God. And when that intimacy comes, a passion is kindled on your inside that nothing can quench. That passion is what we call the fire of God. And so when a man does not have fire, God can't trust his love for him. He said, the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound. But when you keep your fire, it means you are living above iniquity. And so God can trust you. My God. Time is time is vaporizing. Time. 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 Four reasons you need fire. Number one, that's how you judge princes. Number two, that's what validates your priesthood. Number three, that's how you bring witness and receive your inheritance. And number four, that's how you are prepared. The sons of God are cooked in the boils of fire. When fire comes, preparation is complete. When fire comes, you are ready to be commissioned. When fire comes, you can become a reflector of the dimensions of God. A man without fire has no place in God's eternal agenda. How do you contact fire? This is where I need you to listen to me. I am keeping this thing calm so you will hear something and apply. When you are on fire, don't brag that you can pray for four hours. When you are on fire, don't brag the way your body is shaped when you are praying. That does not profit you. That is childishness. How many 40-year-old ministers or 50-year-old Christians do you see praying like this? It happens once in a while depending on where you have entered. Because every realm you enter in the spirit has an impact on you. There's a realm you enter, you start laughing. You can't control it no matter what you do. But you can't laugh every day you are praying. There's a realm you enter, you start crying. You can't control it. But you can't cry every day you are praying. There's a realm you enter, you start shouting. Like a madman. But you can't shout every day you are praying. There's a realm you enter. The intensity there will burn you so much that it will squeeze you. But you can't be squeezed every day you are praying. There's a realm you enter, you can't stand, you will run. But you can't be running every day you are praying. So when you find a mature believer, he doesn't hold the posture, he finds the realm. It's the realm that determines the operation. Young people won't like it because they enjoy what they are doing. You continue like that, after 10 years, you will know the difference. Hope you know we didn't appear here. There were people we prayed with and we saw the many caricature they did. Now they are coming to ask, how did you do it? Because when they should learn how it is done, 
they were wasting their time looking for human applause. Because young people love gymnastics. And so when you are doing it, they say, this is a man, this is the man. So when you are looking for fire or when you have fire, don't pursue things that don't have value. Test your fire to the degree that is able to shift demonic influence. When you come to a place, center that place and find out what the impact of your presence has there. When you have fire, check the weight that your prayer commands. I will not pray for six hours and I don't see a vision. It doesn't engender transformation and it doesn't change anything. That's why many people pray. Brings a deaf person, they become humble. Because their prayer only has weight in time. It doesn't have weight in impact. That's why you go to many houses of prayer. People's destinies are wrecked. The teaching ministries that look weak, they are the ones that make men. Because the prayer oftentimes is corrupt by human emotion. Go and find most of the generals and most of the places where great things are happening. They sit them down and teach them truth. So whatever they are doing, they are doing it from the place of understanding. I'm not against any of those things. I do, all of them happen to me. And they happen to the people I raise and train. Some of us are the greatest advocates of prayer. But we don't want you to do it wrongly. Because destinies are at stake. Don't do what you enjoy. Do what is right. Because your destiny does not depend on what you enjoy. It depends on what is right. And so when you contact fire, you are able to bring government. Because you can dislodge princes. When you contact fire, your priesthood can create impact. When you contact fire, you will have received an inheritance. And over time it will show. When you receive an inheritance in BSU here, a point will come, everybody will know that you are a man of God. And for those of you who are not in ministry, it will affect your results, your academics. It will affect the level of favor on your life. And then when you come out of the university, that thing will make you stand out. It's an inheritance. And you will not only stand out, anybody you make contact with, it will rub off on him. That is the proof that something supernatural is at work in your life. You can't be struggling and I keep making contact with you and it doesn't affect your status in society. You can't be seeking God and I keep making contact with you and it doesn't affect the authority of God on your life. It means what I'm doing is drama. Because when you come around men like David that had fire, 400 broken men can become warriors. Because there is something supernatural there. There is an inheritance that has been received. And finally, when you have fire, you can bring witness. Now, how do you contact fire? I have 15 more minutes. Maybe we'll use five minutes for this ceremony. Number one. So what we'll do is that myself and Reverend, we plan a massive apostolic invasion on this campus where we can be around for three days. Because what's happening here now is like putting me in a box. I'm, I'm trapped. Now I'm trapped. There, there are places I can ascend to but I can't teach. And I don't have the luxury of time. So we will do a three days or four days conference. We will sit here. We will sit down here. Somebody was asking me. They said you are going everywhere. Why are you not remembering Benue? I said I'm not sent yet. I'm not sent. There are people there. When God sends me there, then I will come. But now, I think it's the time. <laughs> so sometime around February, March, we will come here. We will come here. So we will give the Holy Ghost liberty. Now I'm even constraining the Holy Spirit. Because there are pathways He wants to navigate. But time is limiting us. How far can we journey this morning? We can't. When we are we are trapped in time this one i said now two minutes have gone how do you if you are really blessed by this message by apostle Mark orupo please do us a favor by sharing to your loved one and to your group please subscribe click on the notification bar for more related video thank you and stay safe